with another horse racing nation kentucky derby handicapping roundtable edition it's that time of year again folks we're doing this thursday night we're less than 48 hours from the 142nd running of the kentucky derby i am lucky enough to be joined by on my right chief handicapper for horse racing nation that's jared morak hi jared hi how you doing brian it's great good. to be here good to see you nick costa buffalo nick costa the track man coming all the way from Buffalo. Good evening, Brian. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Nick. Many of you already know my uh, my partner to the left here. He joins me each week on Horse Center, Matt Scotty Shipman. How are you, Matt? Brian, it's a pleasure to be here and not uh, on video with you. Tony Bada Bing in town. In the house, brother. Bingo's in town. Look out, folks. Tony Bada Bing is full of opinions and many other things yes many other things a little bourbon tonight Maybe, too. absolutely folks we're going to talk kentucky derby of course we're going to go down we're going to analyze the entire 20 horse field for you tonight give our opinions maybe we'll throw in some bets we'll talk about horses that we love horses that we're scared of and maybe a few horses that we think don't even need to be in the race but they're good because they take some money we're also going to do a little kentucky oaks I think we should start though with the Derby, folks. Tony, I'm going to look to you first. We are uh, we're going to talk about the one horse Trojan Nation. Now the one, the one post, believe it or not, has had. I got my I got my stats here for the Kentucky Derby post position history, it's not and good. no post position <laughs> has won more Kentucky Derbies than the one post. Now that that that's that might be dated information yeah, a little bit. Good. It might be back when the Derby had six horses, seven horses, eight horses. No horse has won the Derby from the one post for 30 years. That was Ferdinand. No horse has finished in the money in the Kentucky Derby since 1988. Risen Star, 28 years. Trojan Nation hasn't won a race yet, Tony. Do you like him? Tell me why you like him. <laughs> Surprise! Uh, he's not going to finish on the board. Come on. He's a maiden. He's going to go from the one hole. I just hope he gets around the track safely. That's my hope for Trojan Nation. I see absolutely no shot for this horse. Uh, bringing a maiden is tough enough. When's the last time a maiden's won? Sir Barton, I, I want to say. I'm not sure. That's a, that's a, that's a good question. Sir yeah. Barton did it uh, nearly 100 years ago. And of course, Sip. he won the triple. Broker Sip was a maiden. Broker that's Sip right. Was 30, like 1933. More recently. Thank you, Nick. I, I knew there was another so, one out there. So before television. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Nobody saw it. <laughs> unless they were here. Right. Broker Sip was a famous derby. You, were you there? Uh, I was not at that one, Brian. But I must say, you know, with, with all the rap on the one post uh, and no winners, the, I, I did a little looking back once. There really has not been a horse that's a serious contender breaking out of the one hole in, in the course of all those years in a long, long time. I'm going to say looking at Lucky was serious. Yeah, that was probably yeah, the yep. last horse that was... Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's about the only one. Six years ago, he had a pretty horrid trip. Yeah. And uh, that maybe would have won the race if he didn't. He came back and won, he won in your neck of the woods in the Preakness. Yeah, and I, I picked him in the derby, but then once he got the inside post, I knew he was done for, and I was able to, to have him in the Preakness that year. It's it's uh, it's a un. Lucky spot. Sometimes you can get lucky, but uh, the one for a lot of reasons, especially that run into the the tight turn, makes uh, the one a very unenviable position. Does anybody like Trojan Nation at all? Mm -mm. Ran Goodwood Memorial. No, thank you. No, thanks. I don't think it was the wet, the wet track. Could have had something to do with it for sure. And then he got a lot of pace help as well. And he has a nice pedigree. He could be in, end up being a decent sort. But this is, a, this is a really tough spot. I want to I want to break this to you guys. I've been watching him in the morning. I've seen him several days now. And he's no better than his past performances in person. <laughs> <laughs> so, Trojan Nation. <laughs> we're, we we are going to skip over the number one. That, that brings us to the two... Sudden breaking news, Jared. I saw him win the Southwest Stakes at Oakland Park. He's a consistent horse, a consistent rallier, and he's coming out of his second in the Arkansas Derby. Sudden breaking news, what's your, what's your take on him? I like him to at least hit the board. I think he's got a good shot. He's got one of the better pedigrees to get the mile and a quarter, and he's got a nice finishing kick. And his Arkansas Derby was interesting. It looked like he was going nowhere in there. I was watching him closely, and coming into the stretch, he just wasn't really moving. And then he got into the stretch, and they started getting into him. And and he started, he rallied down the middle of the track and finished up nicely. And he was so impressive in the Southwest Stakes earlier this year, overcoming post 13. And then he had post 14 in the Rebel Stakes, and then he had a bad trip that day. So then he bounced back last time and 
If he can get the distance, he'll be finishing and passing tire horses for sure. Yeah, he really hasn't run a bad race in his career. No, he hasn't. He was part of the exacta in, in uh, seven of his eight starts. His only um, off-the-board finish was the, the Rebel Stakes where he finished fifth. And he had trouble that day. Bread for a distance. The Gelding uh, uh, might need to uh, maneuver his way around or hope for a good trip from the two-hole. Uh, I've heard a few people uh, wonder if he's the type of horse that is easily maneuverable or if he's a horse that really needs clear sailing. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of trip he gets. I have no doubt this is this is one of the few horses in the race that wants 10 furlongs there. Absolutely. You know, you, the horse always takes the scenic route around around the racetrack. He's always going wide and everything. Uh, you know, he, he, you know he, he, he's faced full, he's, he's faced full fields. Um, he's been in the money all but uh, like one, one race. Um, we were talking about, we were going to talk about horses that's, that scare us. We all have horses in there that we, we're wary of. He's one that, uh, you know, if everything goes his way, he wouldn't, be, wouldn't surprise me if he won it, really. You know, I just think uh, he just needs everything to go his way, being the running style that he has. Yeah, yeah we see a lot of horses year, uh, year by year, Tony, where I think they, uh, they make nice moves. They pass tiring horses to get sixth or seventh. Uh, sudden breaking news, if, if, if the win odds were who's going to finish fourth, he might be one of the favorites. He's definitely in the Bing Superfecta. You, you have to play him. He's just been consistent. The ride, you know, he could, he could face trouble. Um, and so, but I, I think, I just feel he's got to be one of the horses I, I key in at two to four. We agree on sudden breaking news is more of a, a hit the board uh, horse rather than a win. Yeah. Choice. Yeah. I kind of agree too. He's. Uh, I actually, folks, I like six horses right now. It's my top six. <laughs> Sudden breaking news is the first one in. But if we're talking third or fourth, I think he's got a great shot to fill out those trifecta and superfecta tickets. Who's the best horse coming from Arkansas? Is it Sudden Breaking News? The consistent Sudden Breaking News creator who's just got better and better quickly the last few races, or maybe Whitmore who's had trouble in several of his races. Um, if you're uh, asking me to pick the out of those three, I'm going to pick uh, Sudden Breaking News. Um, I think he's got his demeanor is a little is more suited to what he's going to face in the twenty horse field uh, in the Derby. Uh, creator is a tap it, and and Ooh. as uh, I know, Brian, you've been on the back stretch a lot, and uh, you've been sharing information, and I think you've been feeling that the. The tappets have been a little bit headstrong and a little bit revved up, and and that may not play well in uh, in in the high emotion, high tension of the twenty horse field. Yeah, for what it's worth, I think Creator has uh, has shown to be a little bit of a immature mentally uh, type of horse uh, the last couple of weeks here, and that uh, yeah, I think that's right. I think that's a dangerous proposition. Let me get everybody to answer that question though. Out of those three interesting horses from Arkansas, the Arkansas Derby, uh, who do we all like best? Matt said sudden breaking news. Sudden breaking news as well. Tony, sudden breaking news. I am going to go uh, because of basically what Matt said as far as who is the most uh, able to uh, handle the distance, but also everything that goes in with the Derby, 170,000 people, 20 horses. Madness, craziness, first time in a mile and a quarter, I, I think of the three sudden breaking news myself. I agree, I agree, and you know, Creator had a, he had a great trip last time. I mean, if you watch the replay of the Arkansas Derby, he yeah. had a fantastic trip, you know. I mean, Ricardo Santana just went through openings and he was just finding all, all the favorable spots to move and he just threaded his way through, and sudden breaking news, again, seven wide around the turn, you know, now they're both breaking side by side. Some breaking news from the two hole, creator from the three hole. Not a big problem when you're when you're closers like yeah. them. Maybe some breaking news can get the trick this time. You know, and I think between the two horses, just because of what some breaking news has uh, faced, he's faced better fields or fuller fields uh, in, in in his starts. I have to I have to agree with you guys on he, wow. he's the better of the three. So we're four for four. Jared care to make it five for five or yeah, you gonna be a clean sweep. Clean <laughs> sweep. I agree. I, I, I've always liked him, and, and I think that that he's the one. The creator's probably the most improved horse. Yes. He's certainly gotten a lot yeah. better in his last few starts. It took him six starts to break his maiden, and and he's he's certainly on the upswing. But he's even a deeper closer than Sudden Breaking News possibly. Sudden Breaking News has shown in the past a little more running style yes. facility. That's interesting. I think if we had five different people on this roundtable tonight, it might be a very different result with that, especially with Creator more than Whitmore. Uh, I know a lot of people like Creator, 
But uh, if you're watching this webcast tonight, I assume you are since you're listening to me right now. <laughs> well done, Brian. Well sun, done. Sun, sun breaking news. Sun breaking news is the choice of all five of us. Uh, we're talking about Creator a little bit too, where he's just really exploded his last three races better and better. Let's go ahead and take a look at that Arkansas Derby from April 16th. That was just three weeks ago, the most recent of the big Derby preps, where Creator beat Sudden Breaking News and Whitmore. Yeah, and I think that... And they're off in the Arkansas Derby! From the far outside, Gettysburg wastes no time. He looking for the lead and looking to cross over. From the center, unbridled outlaw comes away in second. The favorite, Cupid, and a bit tight now, having to angle off the fence and move into second behind the leader, Gettysburg, who's cleared from the 12th post. Then to the inside goes American Pioneer, followed by Gray Sky. It's a length and a half to Dazzling Gem. Cut a corner, saves ground. Luna DeLoco wide on the course. Stretch of another two to sudden breaking news, who's a length better than Whitmore. Discreetness is second last, and Creator is 12th and last as they run into the backstretch. They went an opening quarter at a robust 22 and 4, and it's Gettysburg in front. Off the fence, the favorite Cupid will flank him from second. American Pioneer is on hold for Bejarano, racing in third now, then unbridled outlaw fourth. Out wide is Gray Sky from fifth. Then racing up on the inside goes Cut a Corner sixth. Moving up on the outside is a Dazzling Gem seventh. Stretch of five, losing ground Luna DeLoco, passed by discreetness and sudden breaking news. They're ten lengths behind. Whitmore is still second last, and trailing his creator. 46 and 4 for the half mile. Less than half a mile to go in the Arkansas Derby. Gettysburg continues to lead. Up on the outside, Cupid continues to inch forward from second. Gray Sky is now third. Three wide, Dazzling Gem. American Pioneer is next with Unbridled Outlaw between horses. Then back to the inside goes Cut a Corner, and Whitmore has a lot to do and a quarter to do it. And they're into the stretch now of the Arkansas Derby, and the leader is still Gettysburg. Three quarters, one, ten, and three. Gettysburg has the lead. Creator will not get the job done. On the outside, here's Whitmore coming on. Big changes is next, and Creator is flying. Creator now strikes to the lead. Down the outside, sudden breaking news is coming late. Creator of sudden breaking news. Creator's almost there. It's Ricardo Santana Jr. It's Creator to win the Arkansas Derby. Second sudden breaking news. Third is Whitmore. Fourth is Dazzling Gem in 150 flat. Bet anywhere with TVG. Defeating sudden breaking news and Whitmore in the Arkansas Derby. We're going to go down the list, continue down the list to the number four. For the uh, uh, fourth straight horse, we have a horse with uh, pretty, uh, pretty light on early speed. Motom is a, is a uh, late runner, uh, big turn of foot. Uh, he's been slightly unlucky lately, Nick. Yes. Mo Tom, after he won the LeCompte in January, has had trouble come his way in both the Risen Star and the Louisiana Derby. And at the same point in, in the stretch in both races, too. I'll tell you, this horse is trouble prone. You know, I went back and I watched his races, uh, and he found trouble like in the first 10 seconds of his very first race. And it's, it seems like it's followed him ever since. I think he could find, I think he could hit a wall in an open field, really. That's how, that's how <laughs> lucky this horse is, really. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, but if, if things, uh, a lot of strange things happen on Derby Day. And if this horse gets loose in the stretch, he might mow them all down, especially if he gets a clean trip. You know, I mean, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, he, he, he got two bad, uh, two bad trips last time. I think the, the last one was strictly uh, attributed to the jockey. The one before that, it was just uh, uh, just the way things, uh, uh, bad luck in the race, yeah. yeah. But um, I don't know, I, I can see him winning, but um, uh, I know somebody here on the panel likes him as their uh, second choice, and they can talk about that later. Um, you know, he's, he's another horse that probably could uh, fill out your super effective, but he's going to need to be trouble-free in the race. Now, Matt, uh, interesting, yeah. I mean, what he's gone through the last two races. Do you think that he would have won the Risen Star and maybe both the Louisiana Derby if he had a clear sample? I think, I think for sure he would have won the LeCompte because it was Gunrunners. Oh, he did win the LeCompte. Uh, the, excuse me, the Risen Star. Yeah because it was uh, Gunrunner's first time back and he was a little short in there. Um, and, and I think in the Louisiana Derby, it would have been a real battle down the stretch. Um, I like Motom a lot in the Derby. I, I think it's time for Motom. And, you know, this is a horse that broke his maiden in his first start. And his, three, his early races were very good. 
right out of the right from the get go. He was a, he was a strong horse and a, and and ready to run. What impresses me about him is that when he ran into trouble, he was starting to to unleash a really impressive turn of foot. And then after the trouble, a time when a lot of horses will just quit and chuck it, he had more run in both of those races. So I, I think he's got some determination and uh, Corey Lannery, two not great rides, but the man knows how to ride at Churchill Downs. I mean, he may be taking the, the reins from, from Calvin Burrell. I, I, I think this is a time for Motum. I like him a lot. He's going to be in my trifecta ticket. He's one of my four horses that I think can win the race also, not just get into the truck. Now, Tony, uh, interesting, of course, Matt had to mention Corey Lannery as the rider that, uh, that guided him to trouble in the last two races. Uh, Corey Lannery wins a lot of races at Churchill Downs. Were you surprised? Though, I'm, I'm talking to the man with the, the horseshoe, lucky <laughs> horseshoe glasses, folks. Are you surprised that Corey Lannery still has the mount in the Kentucky Derby? I guess you stick with what you got. I, you must have a good relationship with uh, Tom, Tom, the trainer. I, I, I'm coming off of him because I just, I just feel like we all had these friends in high school that just found trouble. Okay, Mo Tom <laughs> finds trouble. He might be good enough. He might be great enough. He might unleash that big kick, but he's gonna get shut down or he's gonna have a problem. I just feel like I'm. I liked him. Now I'm coming off of him. Looking through the PPs, the second, the third, the fourth time. I feel he does not have a shot, and I feel he's not fast enough. I just feel he's not going to get it done. And if he can't get it done, done in the field with less than 20 horses, how's he going to do it with 20? Yeah, if you're, if, if you're trouble prone, as we were talking about, 20 is a, a good race to find trouble, Jerry. Yeah, and, and, and I agree with, with Tony. I don't, I don't think he's fast enough. He, his speed figures are, are light. He, he gets in trouble. And I think he lacks the quick, quickness to get out of trouble. You know, some of the closers, they have the explosiveness where they can bully their way through. He doesn't seem to possess that, that trait, and, and in this full field, he could be in trouble. I'm going to say a few things on the point. I, I don't like him quite as much as Matt does, uh, but I do like him. He's, he's actually one of the six that I think have a real good chance on Saturday. Uh, Tom Amos is a trainer I respect a lot, and he is legitimately. Now, a lot of these trainers will say, yes, my horse is doing great. I love my horse. But you can tell how high uh, Tom is on Motown. So I think that's something to think about. I also think he likes the track. And yeah, in the two weeks I've been going in the mornings, uh, no horse has looked consistently better than Mo Tom. So uh, I think he's a live horse. I'm not sure 20 to one on the morning line if we're gonna see those odds. Uh, he might be a little bit of a wise guy horse. So uh, we might expect less than 20 to one on Mo Tom. Now the horse who's beaten him, Mo Tom did beat Gunrunner last, uh, last fall here at Churchill Downs. But of course, those two races with trouble for, for Motom, the horse that beat him was Gunrunner. Gunrunner's the five, he's with uh, the red hot Florangeru in the saddle, and Gunrunner comes off his best race yet in the Louisiana Derby, Nick. Yes, you know, he's, he's a smart horse, and he can run with the pack, and he can split horses. If you watch a replay of the Louisiana Derby, he was down along the inside, and it looked like he was just, like they were trying to keep him in the pocket, and he just had that acceleration to get out, and then a little further in the race, it looked like they were pinching him again, and he got a little acceleration, he got out. You know, so he can, he's got that turn of foot, he can get himself in and out of trouble, uh, like Jared had mentioned, that Motown lacks uh, the, 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 uh, the acceleration to, to get out of trouble. But, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's benefited from a couple of the uh, inside trips, uh, and, he, and he drew well here in the Derby, he drew post five, so he might get another inside trip. You know, horses won four or five races, and as you mentioned, the only race he lost was on the slop at, at uh, Churchill Downs. So he's got improving speed figures in each start. Uh, he's got a, he's got a very good pedigree for for the for the, uh, for the ten furlongs. And there's a lot of good things to like about this horse. Uh, you know, he's he certainly he's a top three horse in my opinion. Top three. How about anybody else have him in the top three? Absolutely. I, I've come onto this horse more and more as I've looked at him and watched the replays. And his jockey Florence. He, he is just gonna, he's ready for the national stage. I feel this could, this could be the ride for him where he becomes one of those national riders. We all know him and his Breeders' Cup success and how well he's done and how well he does in Louisiana. I think this horse has the right style, as Nick was saying. He's got this kind of stalking trip. He can make his own way instead of getting into trouble. He can stay out of trouble with the speed that he has mid-pack, midway through the race and really be able to pounce on the maybe front runner who, who's there in front of him 
at the at attorney for home. Now, Matt, Jared, uh, Gunrunner is uh, tactical for sure. He seems to make that nice move even in the one race he lost. He forged to the lead at the top of the stretch in the Kentucky Jockey Club. Uh, are there a lot of horses, though, like that in this race? And that becomes a, a kind of a, a, a mess of horses trying to make the same move. I'm, I'm thinking of the Derby favorite as another one. It could be, but I, I, I like his push position, actually. At, at first, when you, he's the only speed horse that's kind of gone towards the inside, but, but the, all closures are all around him, from mm -hmm. the inside and the outside, so he shouldn't have any problem tucking in, uh, sitting a good stalking-type trip, similar probably to his last couple starts. Uh, he's training well. There's a lot of positives third race off the layoff. He should improve. The only negative and the reason that I didn't put him in to my top contenders is I still I don't think he's fast enough. I don't know that the Louisiana horses are, are quick enough to make an impact. Now I know that Brisnet, he did have the top Brisnet speed figure of 104. They downgraded that to 100 after some of the horses who ran that day uh, came back. Dazzling Gem was one of them. And, and that kind of gave us a gauge maybe of, of the talent of the horses in Louisiana. Dazzling Gem, who was third, came back and finished an okay fourth in the Arkansas Derby. And I think Gunman are certainly better than him, but, but I, I, I think he's probably a cut below. But he's gonna set a good trip. And, and if you like him, don't let me talk you off of him, that's for sure. Now, the way I see it, and, and what Jared says is, is a really good point, rallyers all around him on his inside and his outside. Gunrunner's likely to be stalking from the rear. I think that, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that we're gonna see Gunrunner uh, forwardly placed, I think, uh, just just by, you know, all the things that, that people have been saying, the, the, the closes are gonna drop back, um, the, and we'll talk more about the early speed, which is, uh, uh, way on the outside, I think he's just going to be there, and, and Giroux will take advantage of it. I, I see him in second or third in the early going, and, and he's going to be sitting in the catbird seat. And the question is, is he going to have, uh, is he going to have the punch uh, when they're coming around the turn? If this race, folks, was nine furlongs, uh, Gunrunner would be one of my top choices. At ten furlongs, he does worry me for that last furlong just a bit. Uh, definitely a horse I'm scared of, but not one of the six that I think is most likely to win. So we just talked about two very interesting horses, Motom, the four, and Gunrunner, the five. Why don't we go ahead and watch that Louisiana Derby won by Gunrunner with Motom, a very unlucky fourth. Also in that race was Tom's Ready, who was second. With the Risen Star champion, Gunrunner. Gunrunner joined by the Lecomte champion, Corey Lannery with GMB Racing's Motom, 9 to 5 favorite. Greenpoint Crusader. Tom's ready in. Now Battery, Uncle Walter. Here comes Conquest Windy City, Drew Four. Old Tom's now a two to one favorite. Dazzling Gem, just a couple back. Francisco Torres with Candy, my boy. One more. Toby Hernandez with Britland Stables, Forever Mo to make up the 10 at a mile and an eighth. It's the big one of the meet. They're in the gate. And they're off on the Twinspires.com, Louisiana Derby. And Candy, my boy, ridden out toward the lead by Cisco Torres. Battery is right there, too. Gunrunner with the rail. On the outside, Uncle Walter, Dazzling Gem, and Forever Mo as they make their way toward the first turn, being led by Candy, my boy. Dazzling Gem and Uncle Walter is right there. Gunrunner fourth at the inside. It's Candy, my boy, the leader at the turn. Forever Mo is running a wide fifth, but settled. Battery is next in sixth. Tom's ready in seventh, running in the fourth path. Saving ground toward the inside is Green Point Crusader at the six and a half. And then it's a break of a length and a half to Conquest Windy City and drifting back to last and settled by Corey Lannery. Mo Tom is running in 10th. The first quarter in 23 and two fifth seconds. They go up the back and it's Candy My Boy leading Dazzling Gem by three quarters of a length. Gunrunner right there with the inside four for Ron Giroux in third with Uncle Walter in fourth. Battery vying for fifth with Forever Mo. They're both seven from Candy My Boy who's leading a half mile from home here in the Louisiana Derby. Tom's Ready is next in behind horses. On the outside, looking to gain ground, is Greenpoint Crusader. Mo Tom is up one spot. Conquest Windy City has dropped back to last. It's still Candy My Boy with three furlongs to go. The half mile was 48. 
and one for seconds. Gunrunner right there, looming now. Gunrunner coming to take on Candy My Boy. Dazzling Gem being ridden. Forever Mo on the far outside with gaining ground now toward the inside is Tom's Ready. They straighten past the quarter pole. Three quarters in one minute, 12 and four for seconds. Gunrunner has forged in front of Candy My Boy. Tom's Ready, Mo Tom toward the inside. Mo Tom checked again. Mo Tom in tight quarters at the fence. On the outside, Forever Mo and Dazzling Gem. Mo Tom got stopped hard. It's Gunrunner. Gun runner for Laurent Giroux, clear to the finish in the Louisiana Derby. Gun runner wins, going away. Tom's ready was second. Photo for third between Dazzling Gem and oh, it was hard luck in New Orleans again for Mo Tom. Then Forever Mo, Candy My Boy, Greenpoint Crusader, Conquest Windy City, Uncle Walter, and Battery was the last one home. Gunrunner striding out by four and a half lengths in the Louisiana Derby. Unlucky Mo Tom in fourth. We're going to go down the list. We're at number six. My man Bingo, I want you to talk a little bit about my man Sam. Is he your horse this year? <laughs> Dude, I will not bet him on a plane. I will not bet him on a train. I do not like my man Sam at all. We did not have this planned. This is not at all. He's, a, he's one of those. Like, You've got to have one of those you know, those horses out. Now he's out. I don't even look at him. He out. Might, he might need a train to bring him in. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, out. Bada Ben, how do you feel about Brody's cause? We'll talk about that. Out. No, I don't like okay. him either. Okay. Okay. Like At least you're being blue, consistent. Yeah, the bluegrass is weak. I think Be the bluegrass is weak. Because if you were going to say you like Brody's cause, then then you got to like my man Sam. I don't. I do not. I don't okay. like either horse. On a plane, train. In a river, in a boat, where I, I like, well, I happen to like Brody's cause, and I, I jo will join Bada Bing with his green eggs and ham. I don't like, I don't <laughs> oh, like my, reference. I don't, I don't like my man Sam that much at all. He's another horse that struck me as a little bit uh, immature out here at Churchill these last two weeks. But he's only had four races, guys, for him to, for him to come to the Kentucky Derby 10 furlongs in his fifth lifetime race. He's only had one stakes race. Um, I, I think it's I think it's a big uh, a big ask and it's one that I'm not comfortable making. And I think that's it. He's, he's just so lightly raced and he doesn't have the experience to be a, a solid contender. He'll be passing some tired horses, but but uh, the Bluegrass fell apart. He ran a decent race. He ran a decent race in, against Matt King Cole before that on a speed favoring surface on the inner dirt aqueduct. But but he, I think from a class standpoint and just an experience standpoint, it's a bit up against it. Yeah, I'm not going to use him on top in my trifecta ticket, but he's going to be in the second and third positions also because he could uh, he could pass tired horses, and it's the Derby. There are going to be a slew of tired horses, and he could get second or third. So as Matt mentioned on Horse Center, uh, he's going to be, be using a lot of uh, horses in the second and third positions. So don't think that necessarily my man Sam is one of your top choices. No. But he's one of those that you're going to use underneath. Do you like him at all, Nick? No. Yep. <laughs> Moving on. All right, let's move I'll it take on. Potpourri for 200 dollars <laughs> <laughs> Potpourri. Oscar nominated is the seven. Julian Leparu is on this turf. Loving Poly Track, son of a gun. Uh, uh, Ramsey. Ramsey put up $200,000 to late nominate him to the, uh, to the Triple Crown in the Kentucky Derby. I'm sure some of us think that 200000 is money well spent. <laughs> Who's that? Um, his, his children? His <laughs> sons? Why not? For fourth, why not? 50 to 1, why not? Longest shot on the board. Spiral to Derby has been had a lot of success you know, I'll tell you of what, late. I, I, I would bet my man Sam before I bet Oscar. Oh, okay, all right. I think I'm going to toss him in there. Head to head bet here? Head to head? <laughs> As far as hitting the board, Prop. I would take my man Sam over an Oscar, Oscar nominee. Prop I would bet either one to, to win. No, 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 I mean, no, you no, know what? He's no. actually got a pretty good uh, pedigree he does. to handle the classic distance. He does. Sons of uh, uh, of kittens' joys have never hit the board. You know, he, he's got. You know, he's, he's got. He's an okay turf horse. Turf horse. He's exactly. a turf horse. He's an okay synthetic horse. But this is dirt. You know, and he was all out the window spiral. He doesn't appeal to me. This is a horse that's never been on dirt before. Yeah, and talking about horses that uh, aren't fast enough to win the Derby, um, I think we could uh, find that Oscar nominated first on that list. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't, I don't like him at all. I don't think he has any shot at all to finish in the top four. 
it's a tough spot. Never been on dirt before. Uh, turf racing, uh, poly track racing is good. It, it is a little bit cheaper. He, he does have breeding to go the distance, that's for sure. Kittens Joy out of a theatrical mare. Uh, Oscar nominated. Uh, I didn't want to like the looks of him, but actually I saw him on the track when he came over from the Spectrum across town, and I thought he looked pretty good. Crazier things have happened than to see this horse hit the board. Can't see him winning, no. but uh, I don't, uh, it wouldn't shock me if he ran third or fourth. Uh, okay. Now the horse below him came a little bit farther from out of town, Lonnie, the number eight for the Japanese connections. And I don't see Lonnie doing well in this year's Kentucky Derby. Come on. Guys. UAA to, to Churchill does not work. It just doesn't work. Yeah. They, they, they should stop making that race a, a derby points race, really. They should, they should do away with that. And they should do away with the spiral. What's the synthetic race have to do with the Kentucky Derby? Those two races. Well, Animal Kingdom the, won, the, the one, won both races. He won one of the races. He won, won the spiral. spiral. No, I mean, he won the spiral oh, and then yes. the entire derby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's see if that can repeat itself throughout the year. Maybe we'll keep the spiral in. But the UAE Derby is not a 100 point. They should make that a 50 points race, not a 100 point race. Yeah. The UAE Derby. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, they, or they should eliminate it altogether. I'm not a big fan of, of any horse from uh, Dubai to uh, to the Kentucky Derby. How many, how many years have they tried it in a row now? Or an over, uh, and you know, how many years altogether they've been here? They, what's the best finish they've had? They've had a lot of six, seven, and eight feet. Yeah. Yeah. And this is another horse. He's a mystery horse because you really don't, you, no one knows about him. But uh, I just think overall he's too slow to compete. I didn't think the UAE Derby was especially good this year. In fact, I thought uh, the Philly Polar River was the best horse in the race. <laughs> yeah. Lonnie's also been uh, a strange, strange horse on the backside, uh, in the back uh, stretch of Churchill Downs for the last I, two weeks, doing weird things, not completely focused, not wanting to do exactly the. The workouts that his uh, connections yeah. want. Yeah, and I feel sorry for the horses on either side of him in the yeah. gate. Ooh, there you go. He had trouble last time in the UAE Derby. Jared, anything on Lonnie? No, interesting pedigree. I actually tap, tap it of the damn sire, Sunday Silence. That's well, that's interesting, but but uh, he's he's really up against it. They, they tried to work him like six furlongs. He won't. He won't cooperate until we're three for long. Yeah. I just hope he gets in the gate and everything goes okay and, and doesn't delay things. I guess what we're saying, folks, is interesting only gets you so far. <laughs> we're, uh, we're, we're not big on Lonnie, the number eight, but the number nine is an interesting horse. Oh, okay. A more interesting horse. Another gray, mm. our third gray that we've hit already, Bada Bank. Destin has won two in a row. They're both at Tampa Bay Downs, the Sam F. Davis and the Tampa Bay Derby. I think there were some good horses this, uh, this winter down in Tampa Bay Derby. Destin's never been farther than a mile and a 16th. He's coming in off an eight week layoff, but there is quite a bit of talent there. And pedigree, and you know, you look at Todd Pletcher's success in the Derby and they come at longer odds. You know, Super Saver won what, seven, eight to one. He had Bluegrass Cat at 30 plus to one. I think this is really a horse that I'm, I'm coming on to, and I, I really am going to use him in my super factors underneath. I don't think he's going to win the race, but I think he's one of these horses, again, that can be tactical. He can set his place in the race and be ready. And if he's good enough, if he's good enough, um, he will hit the board. I, I, I like him for 2-4, two, two, for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of good things you can say about this horse. He's one of the very few horses in the field that has a triple-digit buyer figure. And his race before was also a big, uh, a, a nice figure. And I, I am always a pro Todd Pletcher uh, guy, but I, I just don't like the horse in here. I am not gonna have him on my trifecta tickets. I just think his two races in, uh, in Tampa were just too easy. He had everything his way. I know in the Tampa Derby he had to compete hard against his stablemate Outwork, but it was just the two of them, way out in front of everybody, and he hasn't had to face any kind of adversity. He's not going to get that kind of everything his way trip in the Derby, um, so I'm going to play against Destin in here. I'd like to like him more. Yes, <laughs> I feel the same way, Jack. I don't want to like him. I, I do. <laughs> I like him. You do. I mean, he, he beat Outwork. Outwork came back and won the Memorial. Brody's cause was up the track of the Tampa Bay Derby. He came back and won the Bluegrass. He earned a good number. He's got the nice tactical speed, but no starts in eight weeks. He's only, he hasn't run further than a mile and a 16. And he hasn't looked spectacular 
either in, in his workouts. He hasn't done anything to wow you and say, oh, he's really going to move forward. I just wish they would have run that prep race. I know his owners, uh, they, they're involved in the sheets, numbers, and they looked at his number and said, oh, he ran a huge number in the 10th day derby. We're not going to run him because he's going to bounce. So that would have been okay if he regressed a little bit of his next start and then moved forward again in the derby. I just wish he had that mile in the 8th race. Yeah. Uh, he's laid on two-year-old foundation, having just one start. But he's had four starts this year, but, you know, it hasn't been, uh, it was eight weeks ago. It's a tough task to uh, come in off an eight-week layoff and, and win this race. The only thing uh, that I, what I like about him, though, is the, uh, the Pletcher angle. He is coming in off an eight-week layoff, and if you go back to the Breeders' Cup, I think it was eight weeks for both uh, Liam's Map and for Stop Charging Maria. They both won those races on Breeders' Cup Day, coming in off an eight-week layoff. So if anybody can do it, it might be Pletcher to have this horse do it. So I like him in my top four. I think I got him as my second choice. Definitely, uh, definitely an angle for Todd Pletcher uh, coming in off a longer layoff than most trainers. Destin, I, I will say we should mention Javi Castellano is riding in one of the best uh, riders in America. And I mentioned before that there seem to be a lot of horses that want to stalk. We mentioned Gunrunner. Nyquist, Destin is another horse that's going to be close to the pace early and perhaps no rider in America is better than that than Javi Castellano. But for a lot of the reasons uh, some, of my, uh, some of my friends here at the round table said, Destin scares me as a horse that may be just a little bit too much too soon for him as far as the Derby, but maybe down the road big things for Destin. Let's jump right back into the Arkansas clan. We talked about Whitmore just a little bit. Whitmore gets Victor Espinosa, who's won five of the last six Triple Crown races, Matt. Yes, that's true, and, and I think the significant factor with that is that now Whitmore is going to be over bet. And the value that you might have had on Whitmore isn't going to be there because Espinosa is up, and there are a lot, a lot of fans of Victor, and they're going to be plunking down their money on that horse. For me, Whitmore is a classic example of uh, I, I've trusted him too many times. Uh, I put my money on him too many times, and he just is disappointed and disappointed with, uh, without any really significant excuse. So I'm letting Whitmore go. He's not going to be on my tickets. Top, top 10 talent, but what you guys were saying about Motown before, I kind of feel the same way with Whitmore. I think yeah. he finds trouble. Absolutely. Uh, I also worry about the final furlong. He hasn't proven to me that um, he's as strong at the end of these races as he is uh, making that big move on the turn. That's, that's my problem with him. He's had six lifetime starts. He's two for two in strengths. He won both of those easily. He's 0 for 4 around two turns, and he's lost ground in the stretch in three of his four two-turn races. I don't think he wants a mile and a quarter. Despite hitting the board in all three of those races. That's right. right. He's going to back up. All right, guys. Uh, perhaps the most impressive prep performance out of any of these horses in the 2016 Kentucky Derby happened at Santa Anita on a wet track. The Santa Anita Derby, of course, we're talking about from April 9. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Exaggerator win. He won by over six lengths, sloppy track, Santa Anita, and the Santa Anita Derby. Uncle Lino's a bit agitated. Racing! More spirit, dancing candy away quickly. Denman's Cold's going to ease off the pace in the early stages. Uncle Lino and I and Bob are showing plenty of early interest. It's dancing candy getting the company of Uncle Lino. Followed in third by More Spirit. He's going to get a nice prominent position. Smoky Image out a bit wide's going up to join him on the turn out of the stretch. I and Rob is centre field. Followed by Denman's Call. Six lengths to Exaggerator and five lengths to Plodicus. Dancing candy off and running around the first. First turn opens up four lengths on Uncle Lino. Smoky Image third, more spirit fourth, followed by Denman's Call and I and Rob. They're both a long way off the speed. A gap of ten lengths to Exaggerator and six more lengths to Diplodicus at the five-eighths pole. And Danzing Candy clear by three. Uncle Lino second. Smoky Image moving up smartly on his outside. This lead for Danzing Candy down to two lengths as they draw towards the half-mile pole. More spirit in fourth position, five off the front. Followed by Denman's call, eight lengths to Exaggerator. Iron Rob's beaten already and Diplodicus last. They're at the three-eighths pole and it's Danzing Candy in front. Danzing Candy, Smith eyeing the Oaks. Derby double. Leads a length and a quarter. 
Uncle Lino running a giant race on the outside. Pulls within half length of him at the quarter pole. More spirit five lengths away. Here comes Exaggerator mounting a mighty bid round the outside as they turn for home in the million dollar Santa Anita Derby. And Exaggerator has gone straight past them like they were tied to the rail at the eighth pole. Exaggerator five lengths over Uncle Lino. More spirit and dancing candy. But Exaggerator is finishing with conviction this afternoon. Exaggerator. An absolutely brilliant victory in the Santa Anita Derby over more spirit Uncle Lino and Danzing Candy Forth. Bet anywhere with TVG. And we're back. I mean, I know uh, I don't look as nice as Brian Zipsy, but I think the shades make up for it. So, Exaggerator, what do we make of him? I, you know, when I look at his past performances, Matt, I see that he makes his big moves on a sloppy track. Now, are we going to discount his, his excellent Santa Anita Derby win because it's on a spot, sloppy track. What, what's your thought on that? Uh, personally, I absolutely am not going to say that uh, Exaggerator is just a sloppy track horse because, uh, and Jared and I were talking about this before, uh, before we went on the air, and we were saying that in the last two races, he made the exact same move. However, in uh, Santa Anita Derby, it was a winning move, but in the race before, he broke so poorly and he was so far behind uh, in that race. He made that move from 15, 18 lengths behind, and it was the exact same move, but he just ran out of gas because he was so far behind. So for those reasons, I don't discount Exaggerator as a sloppy track horse. I look for him to have the same kind of move Exaggerator is one of the four horses that I have as possible winners of the Derby. He is ridden by Kent DeSormo, who I'm pretty sure has won this race before. Yeah, a few times he's won it. Yeah. Yeah. He's on a big roll too. He won the, the Low Sound. He, he recently changed his agent, and ever since he's done that, he's been on, on a big roll. So he was the leading rider at Los Alamitos. He's coming in uh, confident, obviously, and, and he knows how to ride Exaggerator, especially last time. The time before that, he, he had that premature move, but he didn't make the same mistake in the Santa Anita Derby. Yeah, the thing about I like about Exaggerator is not only can he has shown that he can be a deep closer, but he can also put himself in the race uh, cl closer uh, up if, if he needs to be, you know. So uh, he's just, I don't know where he's going to be positioned uh, on Saturday. I guess that all depends on uh, Kent and how the race breaks, but he doesn't have to come from far out of the clouds like everybody thinks he does. Well, DeSormo's quoted as saying he's going to come back. He's going to be way back early, so... Yeah. We'll see. I, I kind of thought the same way beforehand, Nick, but they're, uh, they're talking uh, Stone Cold Closer for exaggerating. He's a horse I've had an interesting relationship where I've, I've always thought that uh, huge talent was there. Uh, first two races this year, he lost for whatever reason. Uh, Nike was beat him on the square in San Vicente. The San Felipe, he made that uh, slow start, big move, and then really hung pretty badly. Uh, against Danza Candy and more spirit. But the San Anita Derby, let's say, say what it was. Uh, fast pace, wet track, it was, I think, the best prep of any horse in the race. And uh, for that reason, you gotta respect him. Yeah. It's not my top pick either, but uh, a scary proposition to he, go against exactly. He is my top pick. He's he is, your top he, pick? He is my top pick, yeah. I, I, he always battles this horse. This horse always battles. And uh, if you... And if you think that this horse can't win a race from behind on a fast track, just go back and watch the uh, Saratoga special where, where he won that race. Um, I know he was no match for Nyquist in three previous meetings, but I think the extra derby distance makes up for that this time around. Yeah, Nyquist has beaten him two for two. Brody's cause, interestingly, has mm -hmm. beaten yeah, Exaggerator two for two as well. But uh, I think we all fear Exaggerator yeah. two. Certain extent. Number 12 is Tom's Ready. Tom's Ready is one of the two horses uh, from uh, Gail and uh, Tom Benson, the owners of the Saints and the Pelicans. Tom's Ready's best race probably of his life was last time when he was second in the Louisiana Derby. He's going to be a long shot with Brian Hernandez in the saddle uh, come Saturday. I, I just haven't liked enough of what I've seen from him to, to be too excited, even though trainer Dallas Stewart's had some success in the Derby before with long shots. Yeah, he's been, uh, and I think a lot of people will use them on their tickets because Dallas Stewart has been uh, the trifecta maker. Uh, the last two years with the bomb coming in and blowing up the trifecta and producing a huge payoff. So uh, 
but I don't know. I, I just don't get the same kind of quality feeling about Tom's Ready as with uh, Golden Soul and, and uh, Commanding Curve. But again, I, I, I don't know if I can leave him off my, my trifecta. Tips. Yeah, you know, to me, like, he has like he doesn't have any inclination uh, like to, to beat other horses. He just like runs with them. Yeah. You know, and he's just like I don't think he's ready for the prime time of the Derby. And it's if you like him, it's not it's not what he's done on paper. It's probably Dallas Stewart. Yes. With yeah. the Golden Soul commanding curve, tail of the bird from the Preakness last year. He he, he does a good job of getting his horses prepped to run the best races. He really gets them to overachieve. His horses yeah. usually aren't. They're long shots. They're not that fast. He gets everything out of them, and, and he gets them to run their peak on the big days. Yeah, bottom money. Just, bottom money ticket. Third fourth, super fact. Yeah, I, I think if, if you like Tom's ready, that's where you like him to just get a piece uh, because of what Jared said, Dallas Stewart's uh, pension for doing that recently in, in some of these triple crown races. All right, we're not spending too much time with Tom's ready, but we will spend a little bit more time with the next horse. He's number 13 uh, in the starting gate, and he, of course, is the undefeated two-year-old, returning two-year-old champion, Florida Derby winner. We're talking Gutierrez, we're talking Radham, we're talking Doug O'Neill. Nyquist is our Kentucky Derby favorite. You could say three to one is long odds for him. He's seven for seven. You know, he, he's, he's not run a bad race. He's dispatched of anybody who's come his way. And how is he any different? You know, he doesn't have the allure, I don't think, of last year's Triple Crown winner. But he certainly has put up the record very similar to the Triple Crown winner. And I think people are kind of saying, eh, I get the feeling, eh, he's good. Is he great yet? He certainly, I can't leave him off the ticket for that. He, he's gonna be on my ticket. He's gonna, he's gonna top it on some of my super effective tickets because you have to respect what he's done. Absolutely. You just have to respect what he's done. Absolutely. Distance a question mark? Distance is always a question yeah, mark for everyone is. in this race. You know, some more than others. Uh, supposedly last year, American Pharaoh's uh, 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 pedigree wasn't capable to handle the mile and a quarter. Wrong. So, Nyquist may prove us all wrong on, on, on pedigree. Hey, he, he's my top pick. When, when push comes to shove, if somebody asks me to say who's going to win the Derby and, and not give you four horses who I think could win the Derby, I'm going to say Nyquist. He's done everything right. The rest of the field is a lot of question marks. I don't see why he isn't going to take command of the race right out of the gate. I see him maybe even possibly being on the lead right from uh, right out of the gate, having a perfect trip, and I don't know, why should he stop? He hasn't stopped yet, he hasn't backed down from anybody all season long, why shouldn't he be the winner? I thought, we, Matt and Brian and myself, we were all at the Breeders' Cup uh, uh, in mm -hmm. November, and he was very impressive winning that race when nobody gave him any chance to win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He's, uh, you know, he was out, out in uh, left field uh, uh, coming off the turn, and he still went down the stretch and won that. But I was most impressed last time out in the Florida Derby because he was taking pressure from the inside, and he was taking pressure from the outside. He wasn't on the lead just by himself. He was getting pressured on both sides from two runners, and he just took care of them, and then he just took care of Mo Hammond and he went on to victory. That was the most impressive race I saw of Nyquist uh, up, of his seven races up to date. It was his last one out in the floor of the Derby. And here's my problems with him. I, I have a couple questions. Uh, one is, I don't like this the one sprint, one route, and then is he going to be fit enough? Just look at last year, even American Pharaoh. He was, they got a late start, he was able to get two two-turn races. Yeah. And he was still not 100%. He, just because he was so talented, yeah. that's the reason that he won the Kentucky Derby last year. Now, Nyquist has to overcome that one sprint, one route. Is he going to be fit enough? Uh, that, that's certainly going to be a, a big question there. And, and uh, the pedigree, we don't know about the Uncle Moe's. You can't just say Uncle Moe couldn't go that far. So, this is his first so try. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't really hold that against him. It's more of like it's going to be a fitness issue. And the other problem I have with him is his two best wrist snap speed figures were earned in the Best Pal Stakes and the San Vicente. They were both one-turn races. And his two-turn speed figures don't make him a standout in this race. But you look at the last couple of favorites at California Chrome, American Pharaoh, they both ran fast at nine furlongs and, and then they really trained well. He's trained solidly for this race, but he hasn't been 
it hasn't been that well worked that American Pharaoh or California Crimp have where you can say, well, he's going to win it. He has some questions. He's going to take, I think, too much money. Well, unlike Matt, I'm glad that somebody stood up, Jared stood up and said, hey, maybe Nyquist is beatable. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on that bandwagon a little bit too. Listen, there's no, there's no doubt that Nyquist has earned more respect than any horse in this race to date coming into the Kentucky Derby. Favorites don't win every year, and Nyquist certainly is a horse that I think is beatable. Uh, first off, the Florida Derby, um, I, you know, it was impressive the way he put Mohamed away on the turn. But on the other hand, I don't like the fact that he uh, did not run a straight course down the stretch. That, that makes me wonder if there is some distance uh, limitations there. Uh, in fact, if you watch the gallop out of the Florida Derby, he was pretty quickly passed by the horse to his inside. I think we're going to talk about him a little bit more soon. Uh, also, Nequist, I, I worry a little bit about the 13 hole. The 13 hole doesn't seem like a bad spot in the Kentucky Derby. However, there is a bunch of horses similar speed to him, and they're just to his outside. Mohamed's the 14. Our work is the 15, right outside, a little farther out, Danzig Candy. I don't think that's necessarily the best, the optimal spot. If we asked Doug O'Neill what he wanted in the post, I think he wanted to be outside of the speed. Now he's got speed directly to his outside. For those reasons, I think he's vulnerable. I certainly could see him winning, but uh, as the clear choice, you know, we're trying to win some money. Maybe, uh, maybe Nyquist is beatable. Agreed. 14 is Mohamed, who was the, uh, the showdown, the Florida Derby showdown. Mohamed came to Florida as, uh, as one of the two big names, and Nyquist turned him away. Uh, why don't we take a look at that Florida Derby right now, and that's where Nyquist turned away Mohamed on the turn. Uh, we also had Mahesto finishing second on the inside. Fellowship, unfortunately, did not get in the Derby. He, he rallied up for third. They are putting it all on the line. Perfection in the world of thoroughbred racing is so hard to find. Yet, two horses have found it here. Nyquist, six for six, and Mohamed at five for five. And they're risking that perfect record by taking on each other. It's the match we've waited for live on TVG, the 2016 Florida Derby. In the Florida Derby. And Nyquist had a beautiful start. Chovanes is away with speed on the outside. Sawyer's Mickey came out running in third, and Mohamed is right there, but caught wide into that turn. Four deep for Mohamed into the first turn. And then a long shot, coping away, who's in between horses. Mahesto is down on the inside. Take it to the edge. We'll have to come off the pace here. Four lengths off the lead early on. A break of two and a half to Isofas, who races to the outside of Fashionable Freddy, while Fellowship is last early. The first quarter was in 23 and 3 fifth seconds, and Nyquist will lead the field onto the back stretch of the Florida Derby. Nyquist a half length in front of Chovanes. Sawyer's Nine. Mickey is next and Mohamed is right there in fourth outside of horses two lengths off the lead and not far behind at all up the back stretch. And then in between horses is coping away. Take it to the edge. Mahesto on the inside. Fashionable Freddy right alongside of Fellowship. Iso fast. Last of them all six lengths off the lead after a 47 flat half mile. So Nyquist is a half mile from home in the Florida Derby and leads it by a neck. Sawyer's Mickey on the inside. There goes Mohamed now. Mohamed is moving on the outside of horses. Coping away is in fourth and then comes Mahesto. Around the far turn and here's the battle. It is Nyquist in front and Mohamed has moved up into second on the outside. And the two of them will come toward the top of the stretch together. Three quarters in one, 11 and one. And they're into the stretch. And it's Nyquist and Mohamed in their bicoastal battle at the top of the stretch. On the inside is Mahesto in third. Nyquist has moved away. Mohamed has no answer today. On the inside is Mahesto. And then comes Fellowship. Nyquist drifting out to the center of the track. But he's far in front. And Nyquist is still unbeaten. He has won the Florida Derby. Mahesto was second. Fellowship was third. Mohamed settles nice. for fourth. Clearly... Clearly in the Florida Derby, Nyquist blew the doors off of Mohamed. Right, Jared? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, who's your top pick in the, in the Derby? Mohamed, he's up. And, and going back to last September, well, every year for HRN, I always start my Kentucky Derby blog in September. And he, was my, he had run one time at that point, and he was my number one Derby contender, and, and he's been my number one all along. See, I'm, I'm, I'm much more fickle because in September, Exaggerator was my, 
number one horse. He's made the race, but I don't like him quite as well as some. And, and Jared, I was with you, Mohamed, uh, as people heard, have heard me say on Horse Center with Brian, Mohamed was my top pick uh, from January on. And, uh, you know, uh, my feeling now is if we draw a line through the Florida Derby, and if in fact it was because he didn't like the, the track and we, and we draw a line through that race, um, isn't he possibly the, the Derby favorite now? And we're going to now be getting odds of 12 to 1, 15 to 1 possibly in the race. He, if you keep that in mind, he certainly is a big value in the race. I got to give him the label uh, of the horse that maybe scares me the most in the race. And I don't know, I'm a little ashamed for abandoning him, abandoning him the way that I have. It was a strange day, a sense of strange weather day where it would rain and then it stopped and then it rained again and the track was just so odd at, at Gulfstream Park that day. And as soon as he broke from the gate, because I've been closely following him, I, I could tell right away he wasn't going to run his race. He just wasn't the same horse that usually cruises right off under Junior Alvarado. He, he didn't do that this time. He was pushing on him, trying to nudge to keep him up. He was wide. He just wasn't. He, he made that move towards Nyquist, but I know he wasn't, he wasn't going anywhere at that point. And, and he just, uh, I just have to, he, it was an off day. He didn't like the track. He just did not run his race because the speed figure came back 94 for Nyquist and, and, uh, and Mohamed can run at least that fast, yes. faster. He had 95s and, and on Gris net numbers, his numbers are even better. He had some of the best numbers in the field. He's got a couple of 102s from the yeah. Remsen last year. He's already proven that a mile and eight, he won at the Remsen. I don't think the distance did him in. I just think it was an odd situation with the track and, and he's come back and, and he's been very aggressive in his gallops. That's one thing that's a little bit concerning, but the last couple of days, he's he's turned it off and he's been much more relaxed and that that's that's the key and then also I think because he drew right outside Nyquist the kind of trip that I would I'm envisioning and, and what I read today that Kieran McLaughlin would like to see him sitting about fifth they're gonna let Nyquist go and they're gonna follow Nyquist and then when Nyquist makes his move they're gonna make their move and hopefully Nyquist can't get the distance but Bohemian can he gets the lead and he goes off the late runners that's that's what I'm hoping Certainly one of the more talented horses in the race. I don't think 10 furlongs is going to be his best mm -hmm. distance. And I, I don't see how you come back from losing by that, that much. You know, the Florida Derby was a bad race for whatever reason. It was a bad race. I just don't see him recovering to come back. You know, I, I love Karen McLaughlin as a trainer. You know, and the Derby hasn't had a lot of success, obviously. I just don't see him rebounding from that. He's looked super at times, but the, the horses he's defeated are are somewhat questionable to me. Uh, his last race is inexplicable. Uh, I don't think anybody can explain it. Uh, I don't think it was the track. I think if he didn't like the track, he wouldn't have made that move to challenge Nyquist. He, he had every chance at the top of the stretch, and yeah. I don't think he liked what he saw in Nyquist, so, frankly. If, he can, if he's capable of bouncing back to his previous races, maybe he can win it, or if not, maybe he's looking at it off the board to finish, or a minor reward at best. Yeah. Uh, I got him fourth. I would buy that argument that he looked Nyquist and then Nyquist pulled away if Nyquist would have earned a big speed figure, but that didn't happen. I, I think he made that move anyway because the rest of the field was so bad. <laughs> and I think once, once um, Nyquist was able uh, to, to get that lead against completely overmatched rivals, he had everything his own way and there was like no way he was going to lose that race. And, and Mohamed just, he, he just didn't fire that day and, and you, you have to draw a line through that one if, if you like him. And also, just from the, the ground lost, it was the, the Sheik's numbers. I think he lost more than six lengths. So it really wasn't as bad as it looks on paper. And, and I think he has a big shot to rebound. Of course, who knows if he can get the mile and a quarter distance. I don't know. The whole key for him is going to be he has to relax because some mornings he's been very keyed up and he is a tap it. Mm -hmm. But in his other races, he's been able to. But in the mornings, training for, for this race, he's been a little keyed up. Except the last couple mornings, he's turned it off. He needs to turn it off and settle into a nice drive. And if you see Junior Alvarado get a hold of him and he's cruising along, you, you, we're gonna know early on if, if he's gonna run a good race or not. That's what racing's all about, difference of opinions. Uh, none of us uh, discount Mohamed too much, but clearly Jared uh, likes Mohamed a lot. How about the 15? The 15 is from the Todd Pletcher barn. Our work is your Wood Memorial winner. Wood Memorial winners have not fared well in the Kentucky Derby for years now, Tony bought a bank. Uh, you know, you know, what, what were the odds on Trojan Nation that day? I mean, 80 to 1 or something like that? I mean, yeah. so he, he headed an 80 to 1 shot. So 
I just have to say that he's not good enough. I have to feel that my feeling is I can't put him in there because I can't put him within a super effective because it took him all out to win an 81 shot who's still a maiden. So, when, you know, the company you keep, you know, your parents used to say to you, you know, who do you hang with? That's the company you keep. I can't put him forward in the super effective just on that alone. Tony, it sounds like you heard that line from your parents uh, 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 somewhat frequently. And now I'm giving it to my son. So yes, absolutely, <laughs> I heard that line. You know, I, I, Outwork is a great story. His victory in the Wood Memorial was a great story. Uh, uh, Uncle Mo was Mike Rapaldi's horse. Yeah. And, and this is a homebred Uncle Mo, one of his own mares. It was a great win in the Wood Memorial. Um, I think the Derby is a little bit of a tough task. I do look for good things, though, from Outwork as the year goes by. I mean, he's the kind of horse that we could see a few months from now making some noise in the Haskell. Yeah, Outwork is, uh, is a really gorgeous horse, uh, a well-bred horse. I don't know if he's bred for 10 furlongs either on either side of his pedigree. One of the best-looking horses out there. I just think the Wood Memorial was exceedingly weak this year, and that makes me, for the same reason, lack of experience, lack of class, it, too much too soon for Outwork. Yeah, it was a, he had a pretty good race in the Tampa Bay Derby, and uh, you know he, he noticed he, he got tired uh, tired uh, in, late in the wood, and that can that's explainable because that was a pretty quick pace. But uh, overall, I just don't think he matches up here. He's going to press the pace, and he's probably going to, or, or maybe even set the pace if he can outrun Dancing Candy, and he's probably going to tire late. They've been trying to get him to relax in his workouts. They've been putting him behind horses, and, and he's looked good. He's looked outstanding. I think out of all the horses, at least reading daily racing form, Mike Welsh, he's really had a lot of good things to say about that work. He's lightly raced. He's improving. He reminds me a lot of Uncle Mo talent-wise, like for even for distance ability, where he's, he's, he's going to be good a mile. He, he could be an outstanding miler type. I don't know if he really wants to go this far. Only four lifetime starts will certainly be a, a big pace factor. And... Um, I don't know that he's going to be hanging around too much in that last round. Sounds like we're in agreement on our work. Talented, but not, not quite for the Derby. How about number 16, Shagaf? Shagaf was actually the favorite in the Grade 1 Wood Memorial last time at 9-5, to five, and he ran a quite a disappointing race. He was fifth by four lengths. Shagaf comes back off that poor performance in the Wood. Now, Jared, you like Mohamed a lot off the less-than-perfect performance in the Florida Derby. Can you make a point for Shagaf bouncing back off the poor wood. No, I can't because he hasn't really run fast. At least Mohamed, you have some good races to go back and say, okay, he's run some competitive speed figures that if he does bounce back and move forward, he, he, he can do something. But Shagaf, he won a week, got him, and, and then uh, he didn't run a great race in the wood, and, and he doesn't have any fast figures to fall back on. Anybody like Shagaf? No. No, I don't. I mean, the, the, I think the, one of the positives we can say is that he's got uh, Joel Rosario up. Uh, Winner of the Derby uh, on Orb. A nice, uh, nice return to the races. Joel Rosario, after an injury, has come back recently. Uh, Shagaf is a horse that none of us are high on. How about the 17? More spirit. Uh, is there a better trainer for Triple Crown racing in the last, uh, I don't know, 25 years or so than Mr. Bob Baffert? There is not. There is not. There is not. Easy, I mean, easy question to answer, but. But expand on the horse a little bit for me, Tony. What do you think of more spirit? I, I, I tried not to like him, but I can't. I do like him. You know, he again, he has that tactical speed. He's going to put himself in a position where he can win the race. Do I think he can win the race? Maybe, maybe not. But I, I have to include him because of his style. He, he's going to be tracking the pace. You know, maybe at the 17 post, he's going to be three or four wide. Can he handle that? I'm going to give him a shot to be in there. He's in my super effector just because he's, he's been there consistently throughout his career. He's got Bob Baffert, who, who's consistently done well in the Triple Crown. He, I don't see how you don't include him. Brian, I know you love more spirit. Why don't you tell us why? Well, he's, he's one of my top choices. He's been uh, one of my top choices for the... Uh, for the entire, uh, the entire 2016. Just a very uh, consistent horse. I like that he was winning stakes early, uh, early on in his career. Good race when he shipped to Kentucky before. Uh, I like the way that they've kind of uh, taught him to relax a little bit. He finishes every one of these races well. Uh, even in a track that he probably wasn't getting over well in the Santa Anita Derby, he, he did uh, come rolling home a little bit to, to blow by Uncle Lino late. Uh, as Tony said, a very experienced horse. I think he's a mile and a quarter horse. 
And I think Baffert and Stevens, I think they have him ready to peak. Uh, a lot of these horses, we don't know. They're, they're trying to win their points. They're trying to make the Derby. I think all along they were trying to get this horse to peak on Derby Day. He's a hard trying horse. He's, you know, he's always in the race. He's never out of the money. He's been in the money uh, seven, seven races. He's three wins, uh, four seconds. Uh, I, I have to agree with you there. I, I think if you go back and you look at those last two races, um, the San Anita Derby and the San Felipe, I think Baffert's got something up his sleeve. I think he's got this horse uh, primed to, to run a big race. And I think he can win it if he gets in front uh, when they turn for home and, if the, and hopefully the closers can't catch him. I think he can win, but he's going to have to hold off the closers. But he has to be in front. He, he's interesting. Interesting point you made about they're working with him to try to get him to educational runs. I think in his last few, they they had the Derby points. He was always doing well, and and they they're, they're trying different things. So I think they're still trying to figure him out. They don't even know what his best running style is. So I think during the races, they they've been trying to use him as educational runs to figure out what he wants to do. My only concern about him is is he he seems to be like a one pace grinding. Type, without a running style that I'm not sure of right now, but his workouts have been aggressive. They, I didn't like his first work for the Derby at, at Churchill. It, it was fast early and really slow late, but then his last work was better, and I know that the clocker Gary Young from Southern California really liked his last work. He said, he said if, you, if, if you watch works and, and you didn't like that last work, you don't know what you're talking about. So, so he, he liked that work. I thought that was, he's a respected clocker, and, and his horse is so consistent. He's He's in the top two all the time, and, and as we said, you know, Baffert and Stevens, he's got all that experience, and, and uh, this is a chance to, for, for Stevens to, to get some revenge. I think he, um, because he wrote Point Given for Baffert, and then he didn't, didn't do as well, so now maybe he can get back with Baffert and, and win the Derby, and it, this, this is an interesting, an interesting player. I'm not quite sure what to make of him, except from a running style standpoint, but based on his workouts, I think he's going to be forwardly placed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go the other way, and I'll preface this by saying that I may be dead wrong about this, but I don't like him at all. I don't think he will finish in the top four. I think he's a horse that uh, Baffert and Stevens have no idea about what to do to get him to run his best race. He's been running against small fields, and he uh, has, to me, has not shown much in his last two races. Uh, other people think that he made good moves down the stretch. To me, I think he hung in the stretch in both of those races. Uh, second places against small fields. Um, I know you could say that uh, he beat Exaggerator, but we already talked about what happened, uh, what, we ha what happened in that race. And if you go back to the races that he won, the RB Lewis, um, he beat Uncle Le Leonel, okay, um, that's not saying much in my opinion. Uh, uh, I think this horse is going to take way too much money, the Baffert money. He's going to be an underlay. I want no part of him. At least that like Leonel did come back and win the California Chrome Stakes. So. Uh-huh, there you go. I want no part of him. <laughs> the 18 is Mahesto. Uh, there's been a few wise guys out there on the backside who have liked Mahesto of late. Mahesto comes from the barn of Gustavo Delgado. It's a Venezuelan uh, connections horse all the way from owner to trainer to rider. Uh, Mahesto, any chance uh, for this bomber in the Derby? Tony bought a band. I, I know you like him. I like him. You know, I, it took a long time for him to break his maiden, but if you like uh, the favorite, you have to like him. He was the only horse to run with him. I know he finished three lengths behind. But he's a horse that is improving at the right time. I like him. He's in my Superfecta. I don't think he's going to win the race. I have him underneath. I think it's a solid choice at 30 to 1. I think he needs to, he needs to be a horse that is improving. He needs to be a horse that is the distance horse, the uh, mile and a quarter horse uh, to, to make a showing in here. And I know, Brian, you feel that... Uh, that he is both of those things. Yeah, I, I do like him. Nick, how about yourself? Uh, Gustavo Delgado. He's a triple crown uh, winning tra trainer, although it was in uh, South America. I think it is. <laughs> but hey, you know, Venezuela, hey, but you know what? You give the guy credit. He, he won the triple crown down there. Um, he's a late bloomer, this horse, but uh, I, I just think he was lucky to get a rail trip in, in the Florida Derby. Uh, he'll need a perfect trip here uh, just to hit the board. 
Jared? And I think he was lucky in the photo derby that Mount Haman didn't show up because I think if he would have, that he would have been third. He wasn't gonna, gonna, he wasn't gonna beat him. But but you are right. He is improving. You look at we talked about Creator as one of the most improved horses. This horse is much improved. He came out of a maiden race where he earned a good number, uh, and then he was, was, then he jumped into the Florida Derby, and and then he ran a, a huge race to prove that that was no fluke. So he, he is improving. He's got that nice pedigree. Tis now unaccounted for on the bottom. I was an unaccounted for fan. I used to like that horse, and and um. Everything seems to be going well in his morning activity. He's gotten a lot of reviews with his gallops, and, and, I, and I think that uh, he could certainly finish underneath. Uh, he, uh, he is my top pick for the Kentucky Derby folks as a, uh, as a pretty big long shot. Uh, I said after the Florida Derby, he reminded me a little bit of Orb. That sounds crazy, Orb being a Kentucky Derby winner, this horse being a 30, 40 to 1 long shot. But his progression down in Florida has been very notable. Uh, he did run, despite running in maiden races for, for a while, he did run against a bunch of good horses. He ran against mm -hmm. Dustin, Gettysburg, and the horse he beat two starts back in a fast maiden race at Gulfstream Park. Dig Deep is a horse to remember. I think that horse is going to be a graded stakes winner very soon. So in no ways was that your average maiden. Mahesto came back right out of that maiden race to the Florida Derby, grade one Florida Derby. If you watch the gallop out in the Florida Derby, he is the horse that wanted more distance out of that bunch. Uh, I'm convinced of that. I'm more convinced of it seeing him on the track, getting over the track, and how he just gallops forever, and uh, doesn't doesn't blow out a candle after the uh, after the works. Jared's right; he's bred for the distance. He really looks good uh, as far as liking this surface since he's been here. Um, I also think that there's something to the Venezuelan uh, way of training him. Gustavo Delgado, as as Nick alluded to, has won a ton of big races in Venezuela, including a lot of long races, and I think that's showing off with Mahesto. Getting good at the right time, three-year-olds do that, and I think Mahesto is just a, a tailor-made horse to win the Derby at huge odds. My top pick, Ba-boom. 19. Ba-boom. 19. Ba -boom. 19. Ba -boom. 19 is Brody. <laughs> Mahesto. <laughs> 19 is Brody's cause, Jared, uh, coming off a nice win in the Bluegrass. And we had said that the Bluegrass pace fell apart, and he was one of the major beneficiaries, and he certainly loves Keeneland. If you look at his speed figures, his Keeneland races, the Breeders' Futurity, even the Breeders' Cup, even knowing which third, and the Bluegrass, much better than any of his other speed figures. Now, he did break his maiden at Churchill, so that's, that's a positive. But, but Dale Raymond has him on the right track now. The Tampa Bay Derby, he just never picked his feet up. And, and then I, I liked him in the Bluegrass. I came back and, and played him back, and I was able to get that exactter there. And I'm um, happy with that outcome. So now, third start off the layoff. He's, he's one of those late runners that we have so many of them that that are quality late runners, and, and he's, he's got a pedigree to, to run all day, and, and um, Dale Raymond has not ready to run a good race. I don't know that he's good enough to win, but with that running style, uh, he, he can clunk past some tired horses, and he can certainly come into the trifecta or superfecta. Now, it's interesting, you mentioned the Tampa Bay Derby not lifting a hoof. Uh, it's interesting, Brody's cause really ran a poor race as a maiden. Granted, that was uh, uh, turf at Ellis Park. His first race of his life, his first race of this year was bad. But uh, as a, uh, a two-year-old, he came back with a big win at Churchill Downs, mind you. And then, of course, his second race this year was, uh, I thought, an impressive win in the Bluegrass. Yeah, he just may get better with a race under his belt as, he, as he's showing on, on, on his form, you know. He, I just think he, he's a really good closer. He's won at Churchill, and I think he's looking at maybe hitting the board second to, or third. I don't like him. You don't like him. No, he didn't like, you, remember, he didn't like my man like Sam, him. and he didn't like Brody's cause. You mentioned that earlier. I don't. I, I don't reinforce that. I don't like him. I just don't think he's going to hit the board. I think, you know, at the 19th hole, he's going to have a lot of trouble. And he, I like Louis Sayers. I like him as a jockey. He's going to have to have the, the ride of his life to hit the board. That's what I feel like. That post, this horse dropping way back. He's going to get it over, maybe on the rail. And, he, and he's going to have 18 horses to pass. You know, if he had a Calvin Burrell, maybe I'd think differently. An interesting thing you brought up about the, the post position, too. Like All those other closers are on the inside, so they're going to be able to save ground right away. Yeah. Where he, he's going to have to work out a trip from out there. That, that could uh, turn out to be a blessing, though, if, if there's a lot of tiring yeah. horses on the, the inside part of the track and Brody's causes four, th four or five wide the whole trip. That might not be the worst thing for a horse wanting to really close. Yeah, I could see him coming out of the gate making that, that move from the auxiliary gate where the horses break out and you see him make a beeline to the inside of the, the track right out of the gate. 
Um, in, in this field, he's one of many that, that are, are certainly eligible to get a piece. Um, and if he's a horse that's on the, on the improve, which he could very well be, I think he's got a shot to win the race. He's one of my top horses. I think he, out of all the, uh, the big closers, it's marginal as far as who's the best of the, uh, of the late runners, but I like Brody's cause. I think he's already proven he likes this track. I think he's working well. I think he's getting better. I think he's got a pretty big shot. Number 20 is Dancing Candy, the horse that most of us, most people, most of us here at this table expect to make that beeline for the lead from the outside post. Danzig Candy is a horse I don't expect to be in the top 10 by the hit the 16th pole. Does somebody here like Danzig Candy more than I do? I think if he's left unchallenged, he can go a long way, but not all the way to the wire first. Yeah, Mike, Mike Smith, you have to respect. I mean, in a big race, I don't like to discount him. You know, the breeding obviously doesn't say he can go that long. But, you know, if he can go through fractions of 47, you know, 110, 111, he could be there till the end. Yeah, he Gun, Gunrunner, Nyquist, Destin, Outwork. I don't see Danzy Candy having the lead as they straighten out. And if he doesn't have the lead when they straighten out, where is he going to finish? He may be overtaken at some point before they even turn for home. Yeah, I, that's, I, that's my opinion. I have him picked most likely as a potential last place finisher. <laughs> Wow. He's unrateable. He's headstrong because and unrateable, this horse. He's going to get used wherever he is in the beginning of the race, and he's going to be empty, and Mike Smith, as his, as his, his way, will take it easy with him coming down the stretch. Okay, we busted out 20 horses, folks, for the Kentucky Derby. We're going to give each of our top picks again, but first I want to talk a little bit Kentucky Oaks. We're not going to go down the entire list like we did to the Derby. It's getting late. But I want to know what you think of some of your top selections. Tony Bada Bing, Kentucky Oaks. You uh, you like a long shot, don't you? Of course I do. I, 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 how can I not like a long shot? I you, may be, you may be biased. I, I may be biased. I'll say that I'm biased. I'm, I've become great friends with the Stankos. And, you know, they had Princess of Summer, who Brian Heath loved. And, uh, you know, we, we bet her in that, that, that pick three of the, the Oaks, the Woodford, and the, and the Derby. And we cashed on that day. You know, Mo de Moore. I have to say I like her. That's it. You know, I'm connected. I can't, I can't say anything more. I'm not <laughs> sad. How about you, Matt? Who are you leaning towards? Are you uh, same same barn, different horse? Same barn, different horse. I'm uh, on some of my uh, two day pick three tickets. I am going to single Rachel Valentina. I think she's uh, possibly the fastest horse and the toughest horse. I love her competitive spirit, which she has shown from the very first time she set a hoof on the track. And I'm going to single her in that pick three with a bunch of horses in the Woodford, Woodford Reserve and a bunch of horses in the Derby. Interesting. Love it. All right. I, I love to steer clear of favorites, as you can probably tell by my Derby pick. But my pick, you know, I, I, Rachel's, uh, Rachel uh, Alexandra was one of my all-time favorite horses. Of course, she is the mom. She's the dam of Rachel's Valentina. Uh, that's not why I like her uh, from a uh, cerebral point of view. Uh, I wanted to beat the favorite. I wanted to see who was going to beat the horse that I'm rooting for. But I don't. I think Rachel's Valentina is the best horse in the race. I loved her race in the Ashland. I think she's looking very good over the track. She certainly proved her class last year. I think she's the most likely winner. Dream Dance is my long shot in here. Uh, I like the way she ran a lot of good races at two. I think she's improved at three. Good race at Fairgrounds in her first race of her uh, three-year-old season behind Landover C. And then a nice confidence builder at Keeneland. Dream Dance at 30 to one or more I think is an interesting horse. Landover C for me in the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, she Boom. She uh, raced against Songbird like multiple times, five times to be exact, finishing uh, second three times. She went to uh, fairgrounds to get away from Songbird last time, and she closed over a dead speed-favoring uh, speed favoring track that day to win by nearly five lengths, uh, coming from off the pace. Uh, uh, Songbird would be, off, be about one to nine in this race, so in the morning line of five to one, I land over C, I'll take it. Thank you. Definitely a threat. Jared? Got Royal Obsession at 20 to 1. Oh, there you go. Good shot. Oh. Four lifetime starts. Speed figures went up each time. 
a lightly race two wins in a second and four stars. She's one for one at Churchill. They paid $1.15 million for her. Uh, she's outstanding pedigree. She should set a nice tactical trip. Uh, if, if you want my whole analysis of this race, go over to Horse Race. Oh, bing! Applause! Video applied. play of the day. Go, go to the Plays of the Day section. It's, it, I got my video. I got strategies for the exactas. And, Boom. And, and I didn't know we were doing go commercials. commercials. <laughs> <laughs> check, on. Check, check it out, folks. That, that's going to be good stuff. Okay, uh, real quick. One, I want one horse before we close this show. One horse to win Saturday's Kentucky Derby. It's the race that everybody wants to know who we love. Tony Gunman. Gunman. I'm going with Gunman. I said before, I'm going with Nyquist. Mahasto. Exaggerator. And I have the winner of the race, Mohim. There we go. What a boom. Jared's confused with ninth and first, but that's okay. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for joining us again. This has been a handicapping Kentucky Derby webcast here at the beautiful Horse Racing Nation and Derby Wars offices. We will be back again in a few weeks. Some of us will be back, not all of us. I hope to get as many back as possible for the Preakness webcast. Next week, of course, we'll have some uh, horsemen joining Joe Christofek and I for our regular uh, roundtable show every Wednesday night. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Good job, guys.